I'm Matt Hill. I'm the curriculum designer here at MRU. Here we are at day seven, the last day of our revamped supply and demand unit plan. And so in this day, now that we have the tools of consumer and producer surplus, we're going to use them to explore uh, the equilibrium and why we like the equilibrium. So it just has some retrieval practice. What's consumer surplus? What's producer surplus at the individual level? Here we have the answer. And then we introduce this idea of total surplus, which is going to be the consumer and producer surplus added together. And ultimately, as we can see, as we just do the equations out, what it is, is the value of the consumers they're willing to pay minus the cost of producers. This is where surplus comes from, is that there are a group of people over here that value the good more than it costs to produce it. And this creates surplus. It's a game you can play. This is a very, this is a simplified game, uh, version of a very popular game that you can play with supply and demand. So if you want to play the more involved version, there's a linked more involved version um, in the uh, in the lesson plan in the lesson plan doc that you can go to. We have a write up of it. But econ teachers play this fist pump game, or it's called the high five game. You play it with playing cards, and um, it's really useful to teach equilibrium. Now we don't really have time. It takes you know basically a whole class period to really do it right. So we don't really have time to devote a class period to it in our unit plan. But if you want to, if you have the time, I suggest you play it. So this is just a simplified version of the game where half the class are producers, half the class are consumers. You have the consumers close their eyes as you assign the cost to the producers. It's $10. You have the producers close their eyes and you assign the, the value to consumers. It's $100. So... The consumers are going to buy a fist pump. The, uh, the sellers are going to sell a fist pump. Like I said, the seller's cost is 10. The buyer's willingness to pay is 100. Don't They shouldn't reveal their willingness to pay nor their cost to the other party. And they go around the class and just try to bargain and buy or sell one fist pump. Again, this is a very simplified version of a uh, more complex game. But again, then that's because we're just trying to teach the idea of consumer producer surplus. Now, both parties should be able to come to a trade. The consumers, each student that's consumer values it at 100. The producers that are in the classroom cost 10. So they should come to a price between 10 and 100 where they're both better off. And the reason they're both better off is because of that gap between the willingness to pay, the value, and the cost. Some practice questions kind of getting at these insights where when buyers and sellers come together and it's a voluntary transaction, if the buyer has a higher willingness to pay than the seller's cost, they should be able to come to agreement where both get surplus. All right. Here we have the answers there. Then we have a video kind of discussing this. It's a very, very short, so it's the end of the video they watched the other day. And what it's going to be describing is that, you know, the reason, one of the reasons why we like equilibrium is that it takes us to the point, actually, let me go to this picture right here, is it takes us to the point where the buyers up here that buy it have a high willingness to pay, the buyers that don't have a low willingness to pay. So it's the people that value the good the most that get it. The people that produce the good are these sellers down here with the lowest cost, not these sellers up here with the high costs. Okay. And there's no negative total surplus because all the transactions are voluntary, so it has to create some sort of positive some transaction. Now, the video talks about the social good. In the video, what we're defining as the social good is total surplus. This, you know, consumer surplus, how much consumers are better off, and producer surplus. And so that's what the video is talking about it. And that's what we're getting at here. But also, there may be some other definitions of social good that the students may bring into it. And of course, those are not going to be captured by our traditional metric of consumer producer surplus. This conversation can go on as long or as short as you like. What we're trying to get at is here is what we mean by social good is just total surplus, the consumer plus producer surplus. This is going to lead, leave some things out like equality, like in terms of like how equal the distribution is or, you know, something like that. Um, externalities, we'll talk about that later too. Um, and so that's what we mean in, in, in this sense. We'll get to those sort of other concerns later. And so what we like about the equilibrium is it maximizes total surplus. If we have a lower price, we're missing out on these transactions because at this lower price, some sellers don't want to make the good. If we have a higher price, something similar happens where now the buyers don't want to buy the good. And so we're missing out on these possible positive sum transactions. 
We have another video exploring the equilibrium further and why it maximizes total surplus and how it gets there. Okay. And if we have a quantity less than that equilibrium quantity, we're missing out on positive sum transactions. And if we force the quantity higher, go back to the picture, if we force the quantity higher over here, then the costs are above the value. And so that creates loss. Okay. All right. And this is again covered in these questions. Okay. And so we want to stress the reason why the equilibrium quantity, why we like it and why we like the markets is the buyers who value the good the most get it. The sellers with the lowest cost produce it. And there's no negative trades. We're not forcing any trades where the cost is higher than the value. And we're not leaving anything on the table. And so you think about why is there not some other equilibrium that maximizes total surplus? Like why not if everyone just gets one? Shouldn't everyone who wants the good get it? Well, not necessarily because you may want the good. You may have a positive value to the good, but you know, at that high level of quantity, the cost of producing it may be above its value. Okay. And again, just an anecdote, we sort of go into that right there. If you ever got something for free that you're like, yeah, it's nice to have this thing, but I probably don't value it at the cost. I mean, my son got a Happy Meal today. You know, he played with the toy for like three seconds. Like he got some positive value at it, but probably not at the cost of that uh, 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 of that toy. And he was like, it seems like a waste that they have this toy in here. Yeah, it's a waste. So, you know, just giving everybody who wants one, you know, maybe a waste because their their value is, if their value is less than the cost. And so the, that's why we like the equilibrium quantity. Only positive sum traction transactions where the value is higher than the cost. Okay. We have some interactive practice going through the equilibrium and consumer and producer surplus that the students um, can do. And to summarize why we like the equilibrium, it's a voluntary transaction. So both producers and consumers are better off. The market gets there naturally. And no other price quantity combination will give us a higher total surplus. Now, as I mentioned, this is a an ode to markets, you know, as most, you know, intro econ is. It's just look how great the markets are. They, you don't need any intervention. They take us to the right spot. Obviously, they're not perfect. And so you want to gesture to, hey, we understand there's some other concerns here. And so, you know, the people that don't value the good highly, maybe they don't value the good highly because they have low incomes. And so they just, you know, they have a low value because they have, you know, low incomes. And so oftentimes, you know, the market's not going to work in this case for these people. And so we need some other mechanism to get necessary items to low income households. And that's what the first bullet point talks about. Other reasons markets may fail. So our markets may not work perfectly if we have firms with too much power, externalities, free riders, and we'll talk about all of these in later unit plans. All right. Just to get an understanding check on, do the students understand why the equilibrium maximizes total surplus. All right, that is our revamped unit plan. Get our supply, demand, and equilibrium unit plan here, or click for the next video.